Hey guys, Kukatsu here, back with some more PSO2 NGS, and for today we're going to be talking about the new purple trigger that got added, Alio Intruders, and all the details surrounding that, including a new augment that I think a lot of people will want to go after, either those that are casual or hardcore. But to get started, this quest can be found in Althea Lake relatively easily, right here. But you can also just go to the quest calendar without even discovering the location and going to the trigger quests, and it should be a little bit down the list. Before you can just enter this quest though, just like the rest of the purple triggers in the game, you do need common purple B triggers, five of those, or at least your party leader does if you're in a group to taxi you in. Uh, you can get these easily from all combat zones, no matter the rank. So people should have like hundreds of them at this point if you've been consistently playing the game. And if you don't, you can also just buy them out of the player market for super cheap. Once you get past that though, this quest is easily accessible with just a requirement of 3821 battle power, which is relatively low, which you can get by just being max level and having the freebie gear that, you, that they give you, like a distance and Argenti weapons. But I wouldn't necessarily just farm this quest with just those because you want to be really pulling your weight. I would go to La Seal Exploration first to get Zover weapons and Anya armors, which I've talked about in a previous video that you can check out first. But after you've gotten that done, this quest is relatively the same to all other purple triggers, where it's a boss rush that you're tackling multiple bosses back to back to back. Uh, but this time though, there is a few tweaks to that formula. First, this quest is an eight player one instead of just four, which is a huge help for diversifying the classes and sides. And you don't need to upgrade as hard like the previous high rank purple triggers because the weight to carry is being distributed across more people. Second, this quest is shorter overall because it only has three bosses to tackle instead of the five like the previous purple triggers. This is much easier to farm and it doesn't feel like it drags on nearly as long. But due to that, the time limit is 15 minutes instead of 20, but you don't really feel that pressure because it's only three bosses which are relatively fast to kill because of the eight players. And then the last thing, third one, is that it's separated out into two ranks. But the ranks this time are more of a distinction instead of like an indicator of difficulty because they're the exact same levels and the rewards are exactly the same. The difference is there's different bosses inside. So with the first one, you have Zelvin, Balzaga, and Halvadi. And the second one, you have Ravid, Gilzaver, and Eliminetta. Which one you want to do is entirely up to your personal preference of which you think is going to be easier, or you need to get boss titles for, for like extra star gems, or if you just want to switch it up if you're getting bored of one or the other, but still want to farm for the rewards of this quest. Speaking of rewards, there's actually a fair amount within this, and they're consistent. So you do get like arms refiners in here and Giga Strugments and you get like a set of 10 Giga Strugments at least. So that gets you a guaranteed Giga Spore out of the Giga Strugment exchange or whatever else you want to choose in there. And then also you get some Rayar mats, which aren't like a huge deal nowadays. You do get tech customization discs, both Bs and As. Uh, you can get Trial Augments, which are actually more important now as we'll find out soon. And then you can get Gigas capsules between like 15 or 20 some of them collectively. I did find that you do not get any Gigas 4s guaranteed from this quest, but it does seem to be quite rare to not get any at all. Typically I get like two Gigas 4s per run on average, but that doesn't feel like too bad as once again, this quest is faster where I'm doing it like in nine minutes or 10 minutes instead of like 18, 20 minutes like the previous purple triggers, which actually had a lower drop chance of these Gigas 4s. That is really good there. And then also you can get Starl Souls as a chance drop. You don't always get them, but because these are Starless bo bosses, you can get those souls. Then you do get up to three guaranteed Foundia, one per boss that you kill during a run, which is great for Luxal Finale and Glan Gigas Mass Day right now. And then for the final consistent drop is a new augment called Dero Tria, which is a fusia of sorts that is a component to make a new augment in the item lab called Mega Trial, which we'll talk about in a moment. But for the other drops that are more rare or uncommon, there is the 11 star Wingard series. So every time you're running this, you do have a chance of getting it, but it's basically just as rare as every other quest in the game. But 
you do get more opportunities to get one of those weapons. Then for others, there is the chance of getting the Blue Guard series. I've gotten one of those already, and possibly the Rayar weapon series, but I haven't seen that yet. And then there's other like nine star weapon drops that are basically obsolete at this point. There is a new weapon camo though, the Rayar Almaty, based off the Rayar weapon series. And this actually seems pretty common. I've gotten one of these already, and it seems like several others have been getting them or multiple of them. So this you should be getting, you know, just after a few runs or so, and not a huge like selling point, just mainly using it for personal use. Uh, then there's also special scratch tickets that you can get, which seem pretty rare, but this can help you get more star gems or whatever else you need in special scratches. Before we move on, there is a couple things I want to say about the rare drop rate in this quest is that currently we do have a campaign going on that influences this quest by 150% RDR. So I don't know how the rewards are going to quite change after that is done. So just be ready for it to feel not as good later on. But we still are going to get the guaranteed Boundia and the guaranteed Dero, Dero Trials and a good amount of everything else. Maybe just not nearly as much with that change and also with that region mags do not apply to this quest there's no bonuses there from like the region mag benefits like rdr or attack potency anything like that but if you do personally use the triggers to activate this quest like you are the party leader then you do get some extra rdr as a benefit for using your triggers by 20 percent I would say if you want to maximize everybody's RDR for this quest, everybody should go in alone as a party leader to get that 20% RDR buff by using their own triggers. Typically, you wouldn't do that to save on triggers, but common purple battle triggers are super common, so it isn't that big of a deal to effectively waste those triggers and not save them by all partying up. But what you do once you're in the quest is party up, so that everybody gets the quest trigger buff, and then also on top gets the party boost of 10% RDR as well. If I'm going to be honest though, I don't know how much that's worth it just for the 20% RDR for everybody, because it's, you know, pretty little for a bit extra work to do so. But that is entirely up to you. Let's finally though go to the item lab and talk about the new augment, the Mega Trial. Currently, you can only make it in the item lab with the Augma Capsule section, and it's the topmost option. Uh, this is a great all-arounder augment that gives two photon points, 3.5% potency, 1% damage resistance, and 5% all down resistance. So this is like the combination of all the trial augments into one, but instead of negative stats in most of those categories, it's positive stats. So that is huge for replacing a, a trial on any of your pieces of gear or replacing an LC that doesn't have as much potency as this. Uh, and it's also really easy to make as long as you can do those purple triggers. So you need a set of 10 trials. It can either be one type or it can be even mix and match. So like four here, three here, and three here, whatever gets to the set of 10. And then you need three of those Dero Trias, which as you saw, just a single run gives you three of these with a the new purple, but you do have to obtain these yourself because they're not tradable in the personal shops. So that's kind of like how dual quests operate with their fusions. It's pretty much the same thing. You could just buy the Mega Trials straight up because those are tradable in the personal shop, but you would have to pay sort of premium in a sense, just kind of like the other dual quest augments that you can make here because you know people don't want to do the work for dual quests so that made them a little bit higher price than their material cost and the same thing happens here where the cost of like trials are like eight thousand or so a pop but for this it's more than a set of 10 it's way more than like eighty thousand or a hundred thousand these are currently three hundred thousand that also could just be because they are newer and people are just like going back and forth buying these and whatnot. But right now you can actually make a decent profit by selling these and you do get the Trial Mats and the Dero Trias in the same quest. So this is just easy money as it currently stands. As more people come to realize this though, the price will drop as this gets farmed more and more and people realize how little effort it takes to actually make these once you can do those purple triggers. But who knows, people are weird about their augments. I, didn't, I wouldn't think that like 
those dual quest augments would be, you know, as pricey for so long. So maybe the same thing would happen here where these are always just going to be profit for those that can do it. With this in mind, in addition to everything else that you're getting in the quest, I think this purple trigger is probably one of the better things in the game to actually get Maceta with as long as you have personal shop access and even one of the better quests in the game for personal growth after you've done Lucille because like the Mega Trial is really good for people to use over regular Trials and there's the, all the Gigas 4s that you're getting so that's good money and I think those are selling I don't know like probably around 40,000 a pop if we just take a look here so the Gigas might 4 right now it's ship 3s so yeah 38,000 the Gigas 4 Precision also 38,000 and then the technique, yeah, they're all the same. So like that's huge money. Then you're also getting Star Souls, which aren't like a whole lot, but it can add up. There's the Foundia as well, which that's been selling for like around, I think, 10,000 or so. Uh, yeah, so like 7,000, 8,000, something like that. So just like all of these combined and you can do it like in like nine, 10 minutes. So six times per hour, you can actually make a decent amount of money. But yeah, you could just keep this as well if you didn't want to sell them. You could use it to replace other trials and have better substats. You can use it in addition to other trials because it's its own category. You can replace like lesser LC augments like Grand Dread LC or High Domina LC. I want to replace the original variants though, unless if you're like a Slayer main with a high crit rate or have a decent amount of crit rate like Batal 3 on your weapon at least. Um, but I think if we do get, say, plus 90 soon in the future for enhancement and limit breaking on our equipment, giving us a new augment slot, this augment would, I think, be the best for everybody for that new slot. I just don't think there's anything else in the game that has that much potency, that much, you know, good for substats than anything else that we currently have in the game. But who knows what we'll have when that arrives. We'll see, that's all that I have for the Mega Trial and the general details of this quest, but for those that want more details on the bosses themselves, let's get into it. So for the first rank, there is the Zelvin boss to start off with. You may recognize him immediately from the Dual Phase 3 quest, and for this purple trigger, he's pretty much exactly the same as before. Uh, for this, you want to aim directly at the middle weak point that is yellow, because that one gives you more damage than attacking the weak points on the left or right on his arms. Now, I'm not going to go into all of the attacks of these bosses because it would take too long, but with Zelvin, once it switches from its red state to the purple state, directly after that, it's going to do a move away from everybody and do a wave attack, which is a giant AoE blast that you definitely want to be prepared for, neither guard, dodge, or counter in some way. Otherwise, you're going to get one shot, even with like some of the more tanky builds within the game. Then as you continue into its purple state, it will show these purple circles on the ground that explode into like these pillars. That's going to be done in addition to its regular attacks that it has been doing. So having something ready for like countering whatever for your class is a huge deal for the DPS against this one, but should be taken out pretty quick. For the second boss, it is the Val Zaga, which is incredibly similar to the Fortos Launcher Dolls enemy. And you tackle it the same exact way. We have to break its four parts or like the four legs that it has. And once you do so, it exposes the weak point in the center, which you can lay into for big damage. Before you break all these parts, though, it can sometimes rise up into the sky and spin around those leg parts, shooting flames out, which is exactly the same as the Dolls variant, but unlike the Dolls one, it can also shoot out energy blasts that home into all of the players in the room, and it does it several times. So you just want to be watching out for those, and you can't just sit as a ranged player using charged attacks like you could with the Dolls variant. Besides that, there are these lasting effects that can be put on the field that don't hit right away, but they will implode in on themselves eventually after a duration that you want to keep an eye out for. So you either want to avoid them or try to use them for extra counters for your weapon. This boss also has a couple of weak points on its shoulders, but I don't think it's worth going after those. And it's better to hit the four leg parts to then expose the core for more damage overall throughout the fight. 
For the final boss of rank 1, we have Halvati, which a lot of people don't like because of how you target the different pieces for certain classes. And also, when you do lock on and get too close, the camera can sometimes just like go into the floor or be in awkward angles. So personally, I don't like locking on and I just free aim the fight. But for some classes, it just really is hard to do that. But the main objective of this guy is just hitting the smaller pieces in the circle around him and eventually breaking those. And after a little while, just somewhat randomly or after enough damage, the bigger parts will be exposed, showing the weak points inside. And you definitely want to focus those whenever they appear for more damage. And whenever you get downs, the main enemy will fall and expose a weak point in its chest. So you want to focus that whenever that happens. And then when you get to like about halfway through the fight, it'll go from red to purple and do a special transitionary attack. First it will rise up, sending its ring away and summoning two floating turrets. And then afterwards, do these two slashes, then teleport away. Then slightly after it's done teleporting, it will do this Kamehameha against whoever it's aggroed. And you definitely don't want to get hit by that. Uh, during this, you can either just attack the boss directly, or you can actually jump up and attack the floating turrets, which can be destroyed. And it's actually kind of nice to destroy, because otherwise they'll just keep shooting at you throughout the fight, which I guess you could use for counters for a little bit of extra damage, but it's more of an annoyance, if anything. So the entire group that I play with just typically jumps up and destroys those, and it's nice because they are considered weak points as well for extra damage, and it does go into the boss's health bar, but they do respawn later in the fight, so you have to keep an eye on them every so often. Then you just rinse and repeat attacking the ring once again, going for downs, and you should be done with the rank one of the purple trigger. Then we have rank two, which starts off with Ravid, which is pretty easy. Uh, the first thing that you want to do is actually focus on one of its arms, which has a weak point, and just solely focus on that. Uh, eventually it will break, then you just gotta keep attacking the boss in general. Uh, when it does switch over to its purple, phase this is where it will get a weak point on its head and that's going to be your sole focus for where you want to attack this thing there really isn't anything else to say that's of note for this boss besides you know it's got a smashing move that goes pretty fast you can counter multiple times it also has like this orb thing that explodes out other orbs that you might want to watch out for if you're staying back at a range but going into the next boss we have gil zaver which this one you gotta like switch between multiple weak points depending on how it's flipped around so at first you're going to be just hitting the face that has the purple weak points and eventually it will break after doing enough damage but while it's doing its move sometimes it exposes a weak point on its belly or its underside that you want to focus on that whenever you can because as you might have noticed already the yellow weak points allow you to do more damage than the purple ones for rangers in particular, I think they would find this mechanic a little bit annoying because they would have to blight round back and forth, back and forth between the two weak points to maximize the damage in this fight. So maybe having a second ranger for this rank two could help in that situation so you don't have to worry about switching back and forth as much. Just like the first boss of this rank, there really isn't much to say for its attacks. It's just a lot of spinning around or attacking with its tail. There is one attack where it does like a big AoE field after it jumps up and slams its tail. And that tail slam can come in kind of slow. So maybe you could put in an attack or two if you have ranged options. But yeah, there isn't anything special. Then we have the final boss, Eliminetta. You might have seen this one already from Mining Rig Ratem or the time extension quest in Ratem if you got that far. But for this one, it's probably the more complicated out of all the bosses of this purple trigger. Uh, for this one, you have to attack the four different leg pieces, similar to how you attack the four parts from the Valzaga boss. And after you break those four parts, it downs, and then you attack the weak point in the center. But after that, it transforms into the smaller 
version it has a different set of attacks for its first tank mode it's got a lot going on while you are attacking these leg parts so there's going to be lasers coming out of these like turrets on the legs that aren't broken yet there's also these floating missiles that it can spawn that will also shoot at you and then the boss itself will be doing slam moves or slamming with its legs sometimes we'll be lobbing like these chunks at you that you can see like circular things on the ground that it'll eventually hit you then of course it can just shoot lasers out of its mouth because why not that it can shoot directly at somebody or it spins around in a circle while doing it close lining everybody like it's wwe besides those attacks though it does have these two weak points one in its face and one in its butt uh, for both of these, if you destroy them, it cancels out its missile attack, the thing that it sends floating around that shoots lasers at you. So that can be nice to cancel that out completely if you're not, like, great at countering a million different things at once. You can also just destroy these missiles directly once they are sent out. So I guess it's kind of up to you on how you want to play that. But I think the best course of action to do it as fast as possible is to ignore those two weak points and just attack the legs once you destroy those and get into the humanoid portion of the fight it's relatively simple it is pretty much just like distragris with this portion where it just does a lot of sword attacks that are pretty quick and shoots a lot of bullets that most of the time you can counter multiple times the only attack that i saw pretty different was it can put a whole bunch of these like grenades or orbs out and after a small duration it sends all these out or explodes them and you got to counter or somehow avoid these homing orbs now once you're in this phase you should be able to get plenty of downs you're pretty much in the home stretch and should be able to get a clear from my experience with both of these fights i got similar times and neither was really like faster than the other i'm sure just based on the class makeups that you have you can make one go faster or if you're more experienced with another that would be better for you uh speaking of classes i think for what i would recommend overall if you could just like set up like all eight or something like that uh, i would definitely recommend at least two kind of tech users so like two techers so one in each of the four man parties or just like forces or bouncers something like that because this allows you to at least get two elemental downs on each of the bosses which can help out getting way more dps out since you're exposing a weak point typically and that's just going to allow you to lay in to a boss then i would recommend at least one ranger out of the eight people but having a second could be nice for if the first ranger like misses their blight round or puts it in a bad spot just kind of helps out alleviate the pressure of uh just having the one person blight rounding something and for everybody's subclasses, I'd actually recommend going with Bouncer because you can get this Partial Destroy Advantage and Defeat Amplifier, where this gives you more down factor, so getting downs faster or getting them more often. And then the Partial Destroy Advantage, because all these parts are breaking on the majority of bosses, you're just going to get extra damage for all of your attacks through this. That's going to be really good, where I just don't think the Slayer extra crit rate is going to get as much value as something like this. But you could still just use that and be just fine. Uh, I guess you could also go for like tankier things if you think you're going to be dying a lot. Since these are gigantic bosses that are hitting pretty hard. Or you can go with Hunter or Waker to help out with that. For the rest, it honestly doesn't matter. You can fill it with whatever you want or whatever you are built for. But this can kind of go for the full thing in general. You can really just go in with anything. You don't have to have a composition of any kind. And you can clear it just fine, even with randoms. And I've been doing that myself with plenty of time left over. But if you really want to finish all of the titles, which some of them can give you master cubes and a good amount of star gems, then you might want to have certain classes to be able to make it easier on yourself. So like some of these uh, titles are clearing it within a certain amount of time. So there's one for clearing in nine minutes or less with the rank one version that gives you 20 star gems and a master cube. And it's the same for the other rank as well. So this is separated out. It gives you the same rewards. And there's also just extra titles for killing each of the different bosses in the different ranks. 
So you should get quite a bit of star gems just from doing that. And it's also a great way to get some boss titles done from the different ranks. So like for the Zelvin, the Lemonetta, Gilzaver, I think almost all of them should have a title associated with them and give you even more star gems. Overall, I think this was pretty well done for being a purple trigger. It doesn't break the molds or anything, but it did a lot of good improvements over the past triggers. There's the eight players, so you don't have to stress as much about like pulling your weight. There's a lot of good consistent drops in this, which I think is a huge thing. And also, it doesn't take nearly as long to do. It doesn't take 20 minutes to do this one quest with the five bosses. And now we just got three bosses taking about like nine minutes. And also with that, like the scaling is actually pretty well done too. Because if you go in with less players, you can also easily tackle this quest. I've already seen people solo this uh, elsewhere, so that's pretty crazy. Let me know what you guys think, though, in the comments down below. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.